you're listening to Strange News on Strange But True Radio, episode 12 of 2023, with me, Philip Keeler, in the UK. Well, we're powered by the Spreaker Network. Download us by searching Strange But True Radio on any podcast provider, including YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. It feels a lot colder this week in the UK. The north and east have been getting a real battering by the rain and flooding recently. But it is clearing, so that is good news. I'm not a fan of the cold, as you might know. I, I like I like warmth. I like blankets on the sofa. A hot cocoa in my hand. So although I find the winter months cold, I do feel cosy. I like to be smothered in warmth. And a nice man to hold. I like Cadbury's chocolate. Oh, Cadbury's chocolate, eh, on a dark winter night. That is just one of the best feelings. A nice book to read. Spooky tales of ghosts, UFOs and the paranormal. Get spooked out in the winter time. It's brilliant. It's almost Halloween. So have you got your pumpkins yet? Don't just carve one. Make pumpkin and peanut butter soup. I gotta say, I don't often blow my own trumpet, but I do make a cracking pumpkin and peanut butter soup. Go online, download uh, what you need to do, and uh, go and buy the ingredients. It's lovely. In this episode, then, a haunted airport in Thailand leaves passengers spooked. The UK's King Charles could help lift the lid on UFOs. Residents in Yorkshire, England, report seeing strange pink lights in the sky and ancient radio waves are discovered. Turn the lights down low as we go into the night. Mirror.co.uk reporting on our first story. An airport said to be built on a graveyard has left some passengers spooked to the core. Thai culture has a long and deep appreciation of the ghoulish and supernatural. This reputation as fans of the spiritual realm is one many visitors will encounter when they pass through Bangkok's and I don't know how to pronounce this dear listener I'm going to guess it's Suvarnabhumi Suvarnabhumi we'll call it Bangkok Airport shall we Uh, before the airport was built marshland outside of the city had to be drained to make way for it at the time some locals warned that the chosen area called Cobra Swamp was once the site of an ancient cemetery. As well as construction delays and costs that quickly spiralled out of hands, those in charge of the project had another problem on their hands as they started building here. Workers reported that something just didn't feel right on the site and then some started seeing the blue man. In 2006, Asian Now reported that workers had seen an unquiet spirit with a blue face 
and frail old man's body walking around the 2.1 billion project. At the time, squadron leader Panu Pong, a former commando who heads a staff of 1,000 airport security personnel, said, I believe in this phenomenon. I have seen many ghosts in my life. A year earlier, the airport's opening had fallen flat when only two planes took off at the grand unveiling ceremony before 12 months more work was carried out. Before the airport could officially be unveiled again, an unusually high number of accidents began befalling staff. Two airport workers would die in car accidents. Strange footsteps were heard round the airport at night, as well as traditional music, with no apparent source. Squadron leader Panu Pong said he was lucky to escape with his life after swerving to avoid when a curiously dressed woman holding a baby walked in front of his car, only to suddenly disappear. Prathit Wenmumba, a guard, was one of those who claimed to have seen the old man. He had an aura around his head and walked with a stick. I called out to him when he was wet, but then he was gone. I was so scared that I forgot to ask him for next week's winning lottery numbers, he told SEN News. Not wanting the second ground unveiling to fall as flat as the first one, 99 monks were called in to exercise the airport of any potential demons. They prayed at the climax of nine weeks of exorcisms and rites the day before the travel hub was declared fit for flying. As they did, an elderly man who claimed to be called Pu Ming the same name given to the blue-faced ghost appeared and staggered towards the monks. They doused him with holy water and donked him over the head. I'm trying to, I'm trying to read this story without laughing. But donked him over the head, seemingly bringing the perturbed figure back to his senses. But remember, they doused him with holy water and donked him over the head. As effective as the actions of the quick-thinking monks seem to have been at the time, rumours of haunted happenings at the airport continue to this day. Every now and again, passengers say they've seen the blue spectra wandering around the terminals with his walking stick. Several other people have claimed to see a ghostly lady carrying a baby or reports of strange, unexplainable sounds in the grounds by both airport workers and passengers, are not uncommon. In 2013, an aircraft lost control and skidded off the runway at the airport during landing. In October 2018, an inbound plane lost control and slid off the runway. Both were blamed on ghosts. Well, what do you make of that story? I, I mean... If they if they have built this airport on an ancient burial ground, then I suppose if you believe in spirits like I do, it could have unearthed something. It could have, you know, that is ancient history, isn't it? And moving the ground, could that do something? I I just I don't know. I'd have to go there. I think I'd have to go there to see things for myself. Um, but I I didn't know I didn't know that people in Thailand were so superstitious and were into all of this. I suppose um, well they obviously are, but it's ninety nine. They took ninety nine monks to perform exorcisms. 99 monks. I mean, that would be, that could be scary in itself, seeing a load of people doing an exorcism around the airport. But hopefully there weren't any passengers around. 
Um, but I do like uh, I, I, the best part of that story for me, though, is uh, uh, this 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 poor elderly man being donked on the head. We're going to donk you on the head with holy water. Ah, yeah, I don't know about that. What are your thoughts? Uh, email us studio at strange but true radio dot com. unexplained dash mysteries.com reporting this next story uh, the king has a hotline to those who have all the answers concerning the ufo phenomena pope claims that's their headline so the king we're talking about is uh the king of uh uk king charles and the story goes here we go interest in ufos among the british royal family is certainly nothing new the king's late father the duke of edinburgh was famously intrigued by the subject and possessed quite a large collection of documents books and files pertaining to the phenomenon now nick pope who once headed up the UFO investigation desk at the Ministry of Defence, has suggested that King Charles has a hotline to those in the know and that he could potentially lift the lid on the whole mystery with only a single phone call. Such a move, he argues, could kickstart UFO investigation proceedings in the UK, similar to those recently seen in the US, such as the congressional hearing held earlier this year. If the king doesn't want to appear to be directly involved, he also has the option to petition members of parliament to bring up the topic instead. Someone has to go first, and yes, it's a big, brave step, Pope Pope, uh, said in an interview for upcoming UFO documentary, the king of ufos which will be released in november you don't want to be the politician associated with flying saucers if that's the way it's spun but politicians can be very astute at times they can also lie their heads off can't they um and it's very easy particularly if you have overt or covert royal support to frame your interest as a commitment to open government or concerns over defence and flight safety. That's how politicians in the US handle it and it's a perfectly legitimate interest to have. In fact, it's bizarre if you weren't concerned about flight safety, especially when we have pilots and radar operators speaking about it. That was what Pope said in that uh, new UFO documentary, The King of UFOs. And I will try and watch that in November. We'll review it and we'll talk about it in this show. Um, Pope is somebody I've interviewed uh, on this podcast before, uh, a long, long time ago when we were first really starting out. And he is a fascinating guy to speak to. Um, He's... He's allowed to say some stuff, but there's a lot of stuff he's he's really not allowed because of the the UK official secret act that he signed. But I believe he's now living in the US and um, he's very uh, involved in what's happening in the US with the Congress hearings. Haven't heard very much about that recently, have we? I'll, I'll try and find some bits of uh, more information on that. Um Sorry, the last part of this article says uh, whether or not King Charles has any genuine interest in pursuing the topic, however, remains unclear. Now, there are a lot of people 
that write to the royal family. So I might actually write to King Charles on behalf of this show podcast and uh, see what he says. And then uh, we'll, of course, read it out, read the letter out. Maybe ask him, you know, do you know anything about UFOs? Can you get our government to open up about UFOs in uh, because there's, you know, there's a lot of there is a lot of safety concerns surrounding flights. Um, and a lot of pilots have indeed seen UFOs. A lot of people on the ground have seen them as well. Probably more, in fact. But uh, there is a safety aspect. And if uh, King Charles wants to help, who are we to stop him? I think that would be a, a grand gesture from our new king. Coming up after the break, strange pink lights are spotted over Yorkshire, England. And an ancient signal is discovered in space. Back right after this. We are the Strange But True Radio podcast, independent news talk with thousands of listeners each month by people who love news, politics and dislike the Tories. We also talk about the strange stuff like UFOs and the paranormal. We're on all the podcast platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio and many more. If you want to advertise your business and get out to a worldwide audience, choose us. Email studio at strangebuttrueradio.com and start your growth in worldwide sales today. If you haven't already done so, head over to Twitter. We now have the official blue tick from Elon Musk. I don't know why I'm so excited about that, but you know, small things, simple minds. Um, It's nice to have anyway. We get out uh, to a bigger audience with that, actually. So that's that's got to be good, hasn't it? Um, Head over to Twitter and add our handle at it's the at sign strange b t r strange but true radio that is strange b t r you can get all latest news on what's happening in israel and gaza in the middle east but you can also get news on uh, a horrendous tory party if you want to hear what they're up to or not up to uh, you get all the latest breaking news from around the world including the the funny stuff 
as well. Because we like a bit of light-hearted entertainment, don't we? Light-hearted news is good for us when so much bad stuff is happening. So you can get all the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, the stuff that will make you go, ooh, didn't know that. Everything on our Twitter feed, at Strange B. TR and get interactive with us, but maybe not as interactive as mm, maybe a thousand people uh, not being very nice to me. But I don't mind. It's fine. You know, if if you don't agree with certain things, that's fine. But, you know, you don't need to insult people, do you really? I, know, I mean, I know I am a dickhead, but you don't need to say that in a text. BBC News Online reporting a strange pink glowing illuminated skies over East Yorkshire has led people to believe they have seen the Northern Lights. Nothing paranormal there, um, but some even thought the mystery hue was the hallmark of extraterrestrials. But the earthly reality is a little less exciting so if you're in east yorkshire now you're gonna find out the reason you had a very pink sky at night unless you're an avid gardener that is bursting the bubble nick benham or set nick denham rather managing director of the business behind the glow explained its led lights are used for growing plants I feel like I've been shortchanged now. Uh, Mr. Denham's company is the UK's biggest plant propagator, uh, turning seeds into young plants, which are then shipped off to growers, uh, being event- before eventually supplying the nation's supermarkets. Oh, how nice of him. Uh, the plant raises firm, which uh, employs up to 100 people, has been at its Howden premises, Uh, off the M62 for years. So why are people only seeing the pink lights now? Well, I can reveal Mr. Denham said because of the energy crisis, we had to invest heavily in LED lights, but it means the light is pink and not white that people saw before. Lighting was needed to manipulate day length in order for the firm to maximise plant growth, he explained. Ruby Hilson, an amateur astronomer who lives nearby, described the first time she saw the illumination. She said, I was like, whoa. So actually, I do it in a female voice. She, she said, I was like, oh, what on earth is that? That's not a very good, good one. I'm sorry. So we'll go back to mail. Uh, there was, otherwise we'll get lots of people like uh, uh, oh, uh, Piers Morgan saying that uh, you know what he says about uh, going male to female. Uh, There was the uh, massive pink light, she says. It looks like a disc, she said. Uh, My brain initially went off to its a UFO, but it wasn't moving. It obviously wasn't a UFO. Miss Hilson said she did not think the lights coming from greenhouses were adding to light pollution. According to her, regular streetlights caused more interference when using her telescope from a residential area. That's a bit of sad. Yeah, I do feel a bit shortchanged with that story. I'm sorry about that, everybody. But uh, I know a lot of people in Yorkshire will be wondering why they had illuminated skies. So that's why we that's why we covered it, because also it I mean, although it's nothing paranormal it does show the other side that sometimes things can be explained and that's why we put it in in our podcast um so it is always worth thinking about the other explanation 
It's maybe not a UFO. It might be some new, some boss with new lights, fancy lights, growing plants. Oh, not a mass alien landing like we all hoped, eh? actually me blowing onto the microphone to see if I could uh, add a bit more mystery to the music I don't think that worked very well, sorry about that dear listener Uh, thedebrief.org reporting this next story an ultra powerful blast of mysterious cosmic radio waves, often called a fast radio burst or FRB originating from a galaxy 8 billion light years away 8 billion light years away has just been detected by uh, CSIRO's ASCAP radio telescope according to new research astronomers astrophysicists and cosmologists still disagree about what or who is causing these massive bursts of mysterious cosmic radio waves with theories ranging from colliding galaxies and star quakes to alien communications. This signal, however, not only travelled over 8 billion light years to reach Earth, but, according to researchers, was created in a cosmic event that released in milliseconds, the equivalent of our Sun's total emission over 30 years. In this case, the international team behind the findings say they believe the event was the collision of two ancient distant galaxies. The resulting explosion of electromagnetic energy emitted an FRB that, even moving at light speed, took 8 billion years to cross the cosmos, including passing through the empty spaces between galaxies. Following that long interstellar journey, researchers picked up that signal on June 10th, 2022, using CSIRO's ASCAP radio telescope in Western Australia. Using ASCAP's array of dishes, we were able to determine precisely where the burst came from, says Dr. Stuart Ryder of uh, Macquarie University the paper's first author. Then we used the European Southern Observatory, ESO, Very Large Telescope, VLT. Um, (laughs) It's actually called Very Large Telescope. (laughs) Sorry, apologies. Uh, So so they've got the Very Large Telescope in Chile, and that's what it's called, apparently, uh, to search for the source of galaxy, uh, finding it to be older (laughs) and further away than uh, any other FRB source found to date and luckily within a small group of merging galaxies. The researchers note that the distance of the FRB's origin is significant in two ways. First, it would represent the most distant origin of an FRB ever detected. Second, 8 billion light years is more or less at the limit of our current telescopes. But that's amazing. We can see 8 billion light years with our telescopes. I never knew that. So the chances of spotting another burst of mysterious cosmic radio waves from farther away, at least in the foreseeable future, are not likely. Published in the Journal of Science, the new study notes that their detection did not necessarily solve the mystery of the origins of FRBs, including the admittedly remote possibility that is a signal from extraterrestrial intelligence. Why would that be a remote possibility, though? If you're looking at 8 billion light years, why would why would they say that in the general science 
that extraterrestrial life is is remote. I I don't understand that. Uh, But they believe this new information, which is one of only 50 FRBs ever detected, can only help the cause. They also believe these powerful signals can offer up lots of data on the empty regions between galaxies simply by passing through them. While we still don't know uh, what causes these massive bursts of energy, the paper confirms that fast radio bursts are common events in the cosmos and that we will be able to use them to detect matter between galaxies and better understand the structure of the universe, said the paper's co-author, Associate Professor Ryan Shannon of Swinburne University, of technology and you can read more on that story by searching for it on the debrief.org What have I learned this week? Gosh, uh, I didn't know people in Thailand were so superstitious. No idea about that. Obviously, they are. I'm interested to know more about uh, King Charles and what he thinks about UFOs. I might even write to him to see if he could use his royalty access to get more information for those of us who are excited about this topic. And that's it for this edition of Strange News on Strange But True Radio with me, Philip Keeler. Join us for a new podcast available to download each and every Friday. And if you're out trick-or-treating, keep your eyes open. You might see some ghosts 